This is why, this is why, ah, uh, this is why you need more than one lens. <laughs> How's it going fellow photophiles? My name is Ilya and welcome to the weekly Wednesday vlog. I do realize that making a video like this can be quite tricky because some photographers will say that one lens is enough to cover everything while others will swear by their five lenses that they couldn't live without. So let's say this is for budding photographers who want to stand out in a variety of photography areas or want to start working commercially on weddings or other events. Now my logic comes from years of experience as a professional photographer and it is this, a wide lens and a narrow large aperture lens. Why? Working commercially often requires you to work in very tight spaces or shoot large groups of people or very fast action which can be extremely unpredictable. So you need to be able to capture a much wider picture. Also wide lenses are the general go-to for landscapes. And the fast glass is for great portraits and natural looking features as well as compressed backgrounds and a shallow depth of field not only for portraits but also for product and any kind of details that you just want to make stand out. So now let me introduce you to my 18105. Wait, to my 18105. It's cheap, it's versatile, it's sharp, it has fast focus. Its drawbacks though are a high F number and its inability to focus anywhere nearer than like a foot. The good news is that most mid and low range DSLRs come with some kind of kit wide lens. And just for that reason, because it's so versatile. But the downside is with the large aperture number, it's not gonna be of much use in any kind of low light environment. Luckily, with a flash, and even better, a couple of trickers, you can make sure that there's enough light to capture any type of action. I do sometimes dream of a large aperture wide lens, but they are quite pricey, so that episode is for another time. The 50mm f1.4 is the exact opposite. It's more expensive, it's not versatile at all, and has a very specific use, can easily miss focus because of the shallow depth of field, and can actually be a pain to use if you're not experienced with it. But when you get the hang of it, everything it captures looks stunning. It's a beast in low light, and the tiniest amount of complementary flash will make your lighting lit. No, no pun intended. So now, what's my process of using these lenses in the field? Usually in the case of an average event, I arrive beforehand and have time to play around with the details, take pictures of the entire environment. But when the action begins, I have my wide lens and my flash on the camera ready to roll. I shoot wide to capture the atmosphere and any and all of the people involved, usually from at least four different angles, and then try to find some upper place to take kind of bird's eye views and then maybe crawl into the crowd to take kind of low angle shots. If the action is changing and there are lots of different things going on, I usually keep my wide lens to make sure I capture everything and not miss a single moment. But if the activity is repetitive and generally whenever I get the opportunity I switch to my 50 millimeter and start capturing portraits and details in their natural environment and lighting. So the album I send in has both the type of shots that the client needs because I've heard plenty of complaints about other photographers where they send in a bunch of photos of just details and miss the entire scene or just wide shots and don't have any focus on the details. On some of the more serious occasions I borrow another camera from a friend and I put the wide lens on one camera and the prime lens on another camera and it just makes my workflow that much easier. But sometimes it takes more work in post, especially if the dates and times are not matching and then you have to reorder them in the timeline, or they have a different type or generation of sensor, or they're set to auto white balance, which means you have to match them later. And that's especially a pain if you're montaging a video and you have to color correct each clip from the different cameras. For example, I've even used my Xiaomi action cam in one rig together with my DSLR simultaneously shooting. The wide lens is on this one and the prime lens was on my DSLR. But the results were so different that I didn't like it at all even after spending a lot of time color correcting both of the footage. The lenses come in at about 150 bucks and 250 bucks respectively as I'm a huge fan of buying used lenses. Unlike camera bodies and other tech where there can be a lot of problems which you won't notice until a long time down the line, faulty lenses are very easy to spot. I check the precision of the autofocus at different focal lengths and focusing distances, the sharpness of the image and the cleanliness and correctness of the inside glass elements to make sure there are no pieces of dust or like mold growing inside the lens which happens and that's pretty much good to go. Even with visible exterior damage the lens can be in good enough shape to go and you're gonna get it for a fraction of the cost of a new one. But be warned follow my example at your own risk. I hope you found this video useful and if you did you know what to do and thank you. I'm gonna see you guys next week.